are committed to continuing coverage in the trial of two Aurora police officers charged in connection to the death of Elijah McLean. The 23-year-old black man died days after a violent encounter with officers during which he was injected with ketamine by paramedics. Fired officer Jason Rosenblatt and suspended officer Randy Rodima are the first of five first responders to go on trial in connection with McLean's death. They are charged with manslaughter, criminally negligent homicide, assault, and a crime of violence. Aurora police policies were presented to the jury today, and Rick Sounder has been following this case for all of us. Joins us now from the newsroom with Rick Today's Developments. Karen, a longtime former Aurora police officer and division chief, was called by prosecutors to verify directives that are given to all those who work the streets. It was a call termed suspicious person that led police to confront Elijah McClain. Stop. Stop. The captain on duty that night, Stephen Redfern, testified that he was told by another officer that McLean had reached for one of the police weapons. He then changed the category term to assault on a police officer. Did you yourself personally do any investigation uh, at this time uh, uh, regarding whether or not an assault on an officer had actually taken place? No, I was relying upon the information provided to me by the sergeants. There were conflicting police statements on whether McLean tried to grab a weapon. The officers were white, McLean black. Defense attorneys tried to limit the reading of the Aurora police policy on racial bias. There's been no evidence presented at this point, none by the prosecution, that would lend this jury to infer with any scintilla of evidence that Mr. Rodima or Mr. Rosenblatt engaged in some form of bias-based policing. The jury heard about other policies involving making stops, use of certain submission holds, and the use of force. Kelly? Thank you, Rick.